Hi guys, in today's video, I wanted to go over some safe enrichment options for inside and outside the enclosure for your leopard gecko to just make their life a bit more enriching. I think people think leopard gecko and they automatically just think, oh, small enclosure, warm hide, cool hide, humid hide, we're done, right? But I think that given the opportunity to do a lot of climbing and a lot of engaging with their environment, it's really great for them and they definitely will utilize whatever you put in the enclosure, especially if it's a large spacious enclosure. So I figured I would go ahead and talk about some safe ways to keep an enclosure enriching and some safe ways to interact with your animal outside of the enclosure. Before I get started, I ask you to subscribe and hit that notification bell, which I would greatly appreciate. And I also want to say that I might miss an enrichment option or two. I I'm only human, so make sure that you leave your suggestions down below. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the ways you can make an enclosure enriching. And the number one way obviously is gonna be size. There's a right way and a wrong way to do size. So if you have a big enclosure, but you don't offer like enough heat, like for example, if you have a 40 gallon and you offer only one small heat pad that's not going to offer proper temperatures throughout the enclosure, it's not the right way to do a large enclosure. Now, if you offer a big enclosure and you have a larger heated area or you have heating from above, like through a deep heat projector, or if you have like one hot spot on one side and one on the other, that way they can thermoregulate in the middle, or if you offer heat tape and you run it this way along the enclosure instead of just having one spot over here that's um, gonna be heated. There's a lot of ways you can offer heat in an enclosure is what I'm saying but as long as you're making sure that like in that space they're properly heated and also nice and secure like you're not just giving them a 40 gallon with like two hides and calling it a day but you're actually filling it with a bunch of decor then size can be a really great way to offer enrichment to your leopard gecko another great way to offer enrichment is to offer a DIY background or even just a textured background so you can use the styrofoam ones that come with exoterras you can make your own out of excavator clay or you can make your own out of expanded foam and uh, silicone and then eco worth I mean you could do really all kinds of things you could use cork tiles you could use forest floor tiles you could use all kinds of things to offer a background that's textured to your reptile so that they could climb up the back and or the sides of the enclosure so it takes the enclosure from be just being a nice like flat plane of enrichment to the sides and the back are now enriching too you can also offer decor items throughout the enclosure that are really large and climbable and stable like driftwood or cork bark. Another good option is a cork round. You can also offer resin decor like driftwood that's made out of like a resin material instead of offering real wood if you'd like. Just make sure that it is stable and that any edges that are like sharp, because resin can be sharp, are sanded down. I also recommend not buying resin that has holes in it because if your gecko goes inside, it can get scratched up by whatever's inside of it. So unless you're able to reach through and sand all the areas, I would try to get one that's closed off. I personally am a huge fan of driftwood and cork bark. They're naturalistic. They're great textured pieces for your gecko to like grip with their nails and climb on or rub against to shed. But resin's great too. If you choose resin, that's fine. Another great way to offer enrichment is with the use of a hammock. Now they're not basking lizards like uh, bearded dragons, for example. So they're not going to use hammocks the same way. But a hammock does elevate the space in the enclosure. It does offer another plane of existence for them to climb on. Plane of existence linear plane where was i going with that whatever it offers another area for them to climb on and it offers more area for them to engage with that's off the ground because I, I know a lot of people will just like put a lot of decor all over the ground but then they have all this space up here that's not used and so one great way to fix that would be a um a hammock another great way to fix that would be magnatural's ledges or any sort of like magnetic ledge you could even buy ledges and silicone them in place when you're building the enclosure you could do this with universal rocks Universal Rocks sells individual rocks like to like to create like little shelves and hides and stuff out of. You could also just use one of their backgrounds. You could make it out of expanding foam. So even if you don't want to go like a full background or full sides, you can just offer ledges to um, allow them to engage with the background. Another great way to offer enrichment in the enclosure is through substrate. Now please be careful with which substrate you choose. Do not use sand. Like don't just pour a bunch of inches of sand on the ground like your lizard's going to the beach it's, that's not appropriate 
don't put EcoWorth. I, I don't recommend EcoWorth for leopard geckos for a number of reasons, and I'll have a whole video addressing that because I keep talking about how much I hate EcoWorth, and people are like, would you just make a video already? And I'm like, okay, fine. I have it scripted. I just haven't done it yet because I'm not... Whenever I make an opinion opinionated video, people always just end up coming back to me and giving me slack for it. And I'm like, I understand. Everyone has a difference of opinion. I'm just sharing mine, but I really don't like EcoWorth as a substrate. It's not a soil. It's super dry. Again, I'll, I'll talk about it in a separate video, but I don't recommend EcoWorth. I don't recommend multiple inches of just loose sand. I don't recommend um, crushed walnut shell. I don't recommend gravel or any sort of rock. So be careful with what substrate you choose if you want to use substrate. I think it's really enriching for leopard geckos and I will be switching a lot of mine to having substrate. However, I'll be making my own substrate mix because I don't know of any in the American market that I like yet. I will also be checking out the Bio Dudes Terra Sahara, but I'm just not sure how I'll feel about it yet, so I can't say if I like it or not. If you're not in the United States, a good substrate to check out would be Earth Mix Arid from Arcadia. I don't have access to that, otherwise I would give it a go, but unfortunately I don't have it. If you don't want to offer a full bottom of substrate and you just want to offer a dig box or two that still offers enrichment for them to dig that's great so whatever you choose that's fine if you want to choose substrate on the whole bottom that's fine if you don't that's fine there are multiple ways to offer enrichment as i've been covering and substrate is not the only one another way to offer enrichment that's actually pretty inexpensive is getting a pvc tunnel that's of course wide enough for your gecko to fit through you can bury it under the substrate a little to create a burrow you could put silicone cone on it kind of like paint and then roll it around an eco earth or some sort of soil and like make it look like just like this little earthy tunnel i mean there's a lot of really fun ways you can make that a good safe decor piece um, and allows them to hide in it and allows them to climb on top of it and it's inexpensive plants are another way that the enclosure can be enriching you can have live plants or fake plants i will say that i prefer fake plants simply because most arid plants are like succulents and I don't really find them to be that enriching simply because like they can't really be climbed on. They don't offer a lot of height to the enclosure. Also, um, I kill succulents without meaning to. But if you do go the live plant route, you want to choose plants that are not going to increase the humidity of their enclosure too much because there are a lot of plants that would require more watering than would be natural for a leopard gecko's enclosure. So just keep that in mind. I do prefer fake plants. I think that you can have quite a bit more variety with those and a bit more height and climbability, so to speak. Again, that's just personal preference. If you want to use live plants, go for it. If you want to use fake plants, go for it. There's more than one way to offer enrichment for leopard geckos as I'm covering. I forgot to mention, you can also use other decor items like in the enclosure to build up on. So you can have like slate rock or tile that you can build up to make hides and to make climbing surfaces. Just be sure that if you use those, that you make sure they are stable and sturdy and not able to fall and hurt your gecko. Another great way to offer enrichment is food. So food offers enrichment obviously because it's like great and delicious and moving and fun and they will chase after it a lot of times and so what you can do is offer food inside or outside of the enclosure actually this this one's kind of like right in the middle of the two themes of like offering safe enrichment in the enclosure and out you can offer like an area where they can hunt down the insects outside the enclosure you can offer a different variety of insects that would uh, be more enriching than just offering just one type for example a good variety would be Dubia roaches, hornworms, crickets, superworms, waxworms on occasion, mealworms. I mean, there's a lot of great options of what you can offer them to just increase their enrichment, to give them a different, um, a different taste, a different smell, a different ability for hunting. Like the way that a gecko will hunt after a cricket is so much different than a way they'll hunt after a hornworm. Oh my god, the hornworms, like, Lover geckos love hornworms. I think hornworms alone are great for enrichment because like they just have this, this delightful joy in their eye the moment they see a hornworm. Enrichment outside the enclosure for a leopard gecko is gonna look a little bit different because you wanna make sure that they're in an enclosed space. In an enclosure, they are. It's a safe space. You can do all kinds of stuff in there and there's no harm of them getting hurt. But outside the enclosure, you wanna make sure that you are sitting down with them on the floor when you handle them or sitting down somewhere where if they fall, they are not gonna get hurt. So like if you sat on a bed, if you sat on the floor, if you just had somewhere where there was a big space where if they fell, when you were handling them, they didn't get hurt. 
so i recommend that i also recommend you can take your legs and somebody else's legs this is actually quite fun i did this when i was a kid with my friend who had a pet rat and so we would take our legs and make a diamond shape out of them like here's mine and here's hers and we would just let her pet run around in between our legs and like run back and forth to us and the same can be said for a leopard gecko because that creates like a little barrier for them not to be able to get out and then they can just have fun running back and forth in between people and you can also even create like a little obstacle course like you can get some paper towel rolls and you can get you know like inexpensive and little fun enrichment items and put them in the middle and let your leopard gecko interact with them and experience them and hide in the tunnel or climb on something like a little bridge whatever you know what i mean just something small and enriching people can be really creative with the way they make little um, obstacle courses for animals just make sure whatever you're using is not sharp that it's not heavy it can't fall over and hurt them that sort of thing just make sure you're being mindful i will say that whenever you have your leopard gecko out with you do not bring them near other animals do not bring them outside and the reason i say don't bring them outside is because i've had a lot of people in my dms that'll be like oh my god my leopard gecko ran away when i was handling it outside what do i do i'm like i don't really know what to tell you honestly <laughs> like just keep looking for it um or they'll be like oh i had my leopard gecko out and um it got scared by a bird of prey or a cat and it dropped its tail what do i do and i'm like well just you know make sure the tail heals up nicely but the reason i say don't take them outside is because one they are crepuscular animals which means like during the daylight hours they're supposed to be asleep you should probably respect that Two, there's a lot of stressors outside that a small prey animal like a leopard gecko would react to and it could make them scurry away. Like I said, the person had theirs run away. It could make them drop their tail. Like I said, the, they think a, a cat or a bird of prey scared the gecko and it dropped its tail. I don't know for sure. All I know is I have heard cases of geckos um, just being scared outside, being overstimulated and dropping their tail out of fear. So just something to keep in mind. You know, it's not like when you take a bearded dragon outside, a bearded dragon is going to really utilize a lot of that sunlight in the middle of the day whereas a leopard gecko is going to be like put me back to bed this is ridiculous so maybe if it's like in the evening hours and everything's calmed down and it's quiet out you can take them outside in like a small box where they're nice and secure and there's walls around them and they feel safe um, but i wouldn't just like walk around with them willy-nilly in your hand or on your shoulder because like i said if they get scared they could jump off and hurt themselves so those are my tips for offering more enrichment into your leopard gecko's life, whether it's inside or outside the enclosure. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, let me know down below. Are there other enrichment options that you offer that I didn't think of? It's totally possible that I missed some. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a like, leave a comment, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!